Salon, I'm the Injury Prevention Coordinator for the Trauma Department. Um, we do have sort of a partnership with the DOT, the Department of Transportation, um, to provide free helmets um, to trauma patients who have been in bike accidents and either they weren't wearing a helmet or they were wearing a helmet, but it's recommended that you replace the helmet after you've been in an accident. Any bikers in the room? Okay, cool. So you guys appreciate the initiative, right? We just want people to stay safe. It's not about um, judging their behavior or anything, but just offering safety equipment. Uh, so obviously, well, you guys tell me, are there bike accidents that come to the ED that don't get admitted? So I only work with admitted patients for trauma, so I would love to be able to extend this initiative um, to anyone getting hurt or anyone at risk of getting hurt on a bike. And I'm a biker as well, so I'm definitely passionate about this project. Um, so I haven't figured out all the logistics yet of where helmets would be kept in the ED. So I just wanted to take the opportunity today, since I knew there was time in your schedule, to share the proper fitting techniques for helmets um, and then for now, I work here you know, pretty much daytime, Monday through Friday. For now, we can just work it out. If you have a patient who needs a helmet, you can call me, hopefully I'll be available. I can come down to the ED and provide it. Um, going forward, I am working with Mr. Love and Dr. Xavier to find a more sustainable way for it to just flow in the emergency room without me being involved. But for today, I just have some flyers with my phone number and we'll start there. So thank you, Charles, for offering to be the volunteer. Um, so I was only seeking someone with a small head because, um, <laughs> sorry, um, I only have a size small. Um, but we'll be able, if it doesn't work, we can still do the demonstration, but it'd be great to show you on a person. And I brought a few extra in case anyone wants to come up and try it out after. Um, I do have a variety of sizes, but because it's kind of winter, it's like out of season for helmets, the DOT can provide me with every size. Um, and they are adjustable too, but, you, but the DOT does recommend that you fit people. So, step one, um, well what's the very first step? How would we identify a patient who's in need of a helmet? Anyone who has a bike? Yes, anyone who came in with a bike accident, and um, if they were wearing a helmet, are they eligible to get a helmet? Yes. 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 If they were not wearing a helmet, yes, yes. even more so, right? And um, they don't have to pay for it. The only thing is that we have a waiver for them to sign, just you know, stating that Kings County won't be responsible, of course, if they wear their helmet and still get hurt. So step one is to measure the head. Um, we have cool DOT uh, measuring tapes. And you take one finger or two fingers, and you place it above the eyebrow of the person whose head you're measuring. Um, how should a helmet fit when it's on? Should it go straight across the head, or should it be tilted? Straight, straight across, right? So you want to measure at the point where it's going to go right around and sit kind of flat. Um, ready? Thanks. Uh, so I usually let people know I'm about to touch your face and measure your head. So I'm going to put my finger one above your eyebrow. <laughs> it's uh, 21 <laughs> inches around. <laughs> I will consult my handy size chart. Okay, and Charles is actually a size medium, <laughs> uh, which I do not have on me, and I don't have any medium at Kings County at all. <laughs> but what I have found, so I've done a lot of these giveaways um, in a more preventative fashion. So as I've done it at a couple schools and community events. Um, with kids and they're really disappointed. So what I've found too is you can also just try fitting it to someone and because it's adjustable at the back, if it fits and they feel comfortable and it has the proper fit, um, it's okay still to give them. So a size small is 19 or 20 inches, Charles is 21, so we're gonna try it anyway. Um, so every helmet comes in this little bag and it comes with a few accessories. Um, that I usually share with people once I've fitted them. So we'll come back to whatever's in here. Yeah, 
So this adjuster in the back is a little um, wheel that you can turn to make it bigger or smaller. So we're going to try making it a little bigger to see if it will fit just for the purpose of the demonstration. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Does this fit? Would we give this to a patient? No. Okay, so let's make that clear. But for the purpose of the demonstration today, um, let me see if we let it out a little more, if it will fit on just enough to show all the proper techniques. Okay. Yeah, or does anyone else? Yeah, all those go to Anyone else want to volunteer? Try it. See if their head might be one inch smaller around. <laughs> so um, I'll do, I'm just going to demonstrate it up here, okay? So actually, if you could just keep it on this, I can show the placement. So there's kind of um, three major things we look for, well, four major things we look for when we're fitting a helmet properly. So first of all, we talked about the first one already, right? Where on the head should it be sitting? Yeah, just kind of straight across, right? So if it looks like this, good or bad? Bad, right? If it's like that, oh, sorry, bad. Okay, so we want to make sure it's going to fit straight across. And should it be kind of snug or loose? Snug. snug, right? So the way they taught me at the DOT is that we want our helmet to actually just become part of our head, right? It should be like another layer of the skull. So with kids, this is fun. You know, I ask them to shake their head, and if it wobbles at all, it's too big, right? And you can either adjust it in the back, or maybe you've fitted it to the wrong size. Um, the sec, the Third and fourth ways that we make sure a helmet is fitted properly is what you can actually change with the patient and fit to their specific head. Um, and it's the two strap areas. So we have um, ear straps on the side. They should fit like um, little V's underneath your ears. So you want to, yeah, so because this helmet's too small, it kind of is there already, right? As you can see, even a little tight, right? So we would let them down a little bit so that there's a little space between the earlobe and the strap. Um, and then the fourth um, way to make sure it fits safely is the chin strap. So how do you guys think a chin strap should fit? <coughs> Over the beard. <laughs> Over the beard, yeah. It should be pretty snug. So you want to be able to fit like one finger length in between your chin and the strap, but not two. So somewhere between one and two or just one finger. And you should test that with your own finger. Um, and so if you have the ear strap snug and the chin strap snug, um, that should also prevent the wobbling. Um, so any questions so far? <coughs> All makes sense, right? Especially the, for those of you who hopefully wear your own helmets and you bike. Thank you. Um, and I'll just show very briefly the, you know, what comes in the helmet. Every helmet comes with a little wearer's guide. So, what? No. Thank you, yeah. Charles. Excellent job. <laughs> so, even though you've fitted the helmet to the patient and shared that safety education about how it should properly fit for maximum safety, let them know too that there's a guide in here and that they can check it out before they use it. Um, it has the same uh, safety descriptions and you know just kind of reinforces what you've already shared with them. Every bike also comes with a visor, which you can clip on to the front. Um, that's mostly for sun protection, but it does offer a little bit of extra protection on the helmet as well. And then these helmets um, also come with replacement pads for the insides. So if you get sweaty, you can take these ones out, wash them, use these instead, uh, whatever you want to do. So I think they're, I think they're pretty nice helmets. Um, I use mine. Anyone here is welcome to one. When I pass out the flyers with my number, um, you can just, well, you can measure your head while we're here and we'll write it down and then when we go back to the hospital as long as you're not a size medium, um, sorry, Charles, um, <laughs> we'll be able to get you a helmet and a waiver. Are we getting size mediums at some point? I think when it's so April, 
through October is kind of like the on season for biking, and I believe DOT will send another shipment of helmets then. Yeah, and we also, so it runs from extra small to extra large. Extra small is for um, toddlers, and extra large, um, it's not really that big, but they're the adjustable ones, they just go up from there. Um, so hopefully we'll get the whole range. I don't have any extra smalls either, currently. Um, yes? Uh, when we give these to kids who came in <coughs> hurt on a bike and their sibling says, can I have a helmet too, is the answer yes? That's a great question, and I'm going to say yes, but um, what what do we need from someone like to be able to give them a helmet? Okay. Yeah, we need to measure their head and give them the right size. That's just our <laughs> obligation as uh, safety, I'm a safety professional, right, and as medical professional, so they can't, you know, I think, I'm sure parents will be tempted to ask, oh, I have kids at home, that's where we draw the line, but if their other child is there, and it doesn't have to be their child, if they're there with a friend or a cousin, that's fine too, but only for people who are there. Does that make sense? Okay, so that we can measure their head and then um, sign the waiver. And so, of course, for minors, if it's a child who's been in an accident, it has to be an adult signing the waiver for them. Ideally, their guardian, but um, I've been at a lot of these school events where they're there with a family friend or a godparent or an aunt, and um, I think that's fine as well. So, any other questions? Can helmets sustain like multiple impacts, or do you need to toss them out? No, it's recommended that you replace a helmet after you've been in a crash, which is exactly why they are available for any patient in a bike accident. Thank you. <coughs> any I, other questions? I was going to say, we may not want to encourage the whole of helmet for everyone there, just because, I don't know, our EDs are already crowded enough, but if people look <laughs> Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's your fault. Are you, do you mean about, like, if you're with someone who yeah. has a bike accident? I think you guys can use your discretion. Yeah. I would never be angry if I found out, like, that you turned down someone who wasn't a patient. If it's going to make your life easier and, like, make care for the patient flow faster and more smoothly, then by all means say, actually, this is just for patients. That's, that's up to your discretion. But if it's... Um, if it's a slow day or, you know, if it's going to be just one person and it's not going to be a lot of extra work, DOT is fine with anybody having these helmets. I mean, I think it's just probably better for preventative care if we get that wants Yeah. So the, the school events have been really fun and it definitely, you know, it's primary prevention instead of secondary or tertiary. Yeah. So. So where, where do we actually get the like, tomorrow? Yes. So for now, while we get a better, like more sustainable system in place, you, I, so again, I have these flyers. I can hand them out here or I can just bring them over to the ER later. But um, for now, you would just call me. Um, do you guys think it's reasonable to leave a couple measuring tapes in the ER? So at least you can call me with the size number and I can come down with the right helmet and I can do the fitting and get the waiver and everything. So I do, again, the waivers are important, and I also, of course, I'm tracking how many I give out just to document our efforts. Um, so for now, um, I'll just do it, like I said, I'm there Monday through Friday, mo like more or less eight to four, and I have my extension on here. You can send me an email with their MRN and head size. Oh, I just want to clarify, this is a James Cap, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, that's all I have to share. I'm happy to take more questions, or if anyone, I brought a few extra helmets, so if anyone wants to come up and play around with it or try them on, I would encourage you to come check them out. So, again, anyone think they have a small head willing <laughs> to come up and try one out? First of all, I think, guys, this is a great initiative, and then the other thing to remember, wherever you're working, that this is a good learning point, that if someone's in a bicycle accident, you should give them that uh, learning point referral that, that they should replace their helmet. Uh, another one that we often forget is uh, kids in car accidents, if they're in a car seat, it's recommended to replace the car seat as well, or at least to get it examined by uh, the uh, DMY or fire department to see if you still uh, have the safety features. So there's two good things to remember besides accidents. 
And that question about um, sustaining multiple impacts, even if the patient says, like, well, I didn't hit my head, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just encourage them to take a helmet and switch it out anyway, even if the helmet looks fine. Because we don't know, really, right? Great, thanks.